Oh, good morning, everyone. How many is excited to be in God's house today? And we can all stand at this time. And as you can tell, Pastor Marco, like you just said it right now, he's in, in our new church in Tijuana, Mexico. He's going to be preaching this morning at 11 o'clock. They've been doing three days of outreach. Friday, they went out to the, um, they went out to the refugee camp, um, refugee area, or even where the, where the border right now. You've seen the news where people are trying to cross the border. They sent a team out to minister to those that are trying to cross the border. And they just need some hope and need some love. Then Saturday, yesterday, our Tijuana team, they went out to the dump. This is a place where parents drop off their children. They don't know what to do with them. There's no finances. They drop them off there. People are living there at the dump. This is a place where people, when they're struggling to get food or to get something, they go to the dump to go there. And our team ministered there and led people to Jesus. They gave out hot dogs yesterday. They had a wonderful time. And then today, they're giving out their Christmas presents. So God is moving. Like you see in the video, we're getting ready to give out 7,000 toys this week. Give Jesus a shout of praise. And who's a part of that? We're all a part. Look at your neighbor. You're a part of that. You're a part of that through your serving and through your giving. And if I could just reemphasize, like Pastor Marco mentioned, let's make sure. How many are already done Christmas shopping? You're done already. All right, all the prepared. Okay, all the. How many, how many procrastinators? How many are still shopping? All right, good luck this week. Almost everything is out. And I don't know. But let's be careful. I think Pastor Marco mentioned, be careful we're buying everybody gifts, which we should. If we can, you'll get them something. But let's make sure we bring the king something as well. Let's bring the king of kings and lord of lords a special offering. So you can bring it on the 19th. That's next Sunday. You can bring it Wednesday the 22nd or our Christmas Eve service the 24th. How many received one of these envelopes on the way in? You got one? All right. So pray about that special offering. You'll bring it also. How many got one of these flyers on the way in? You guys got one of these? Wave to me if you got one of these. Wave your flyer at me. Wave. You got one of these? Yeah. Grab five. Grab six. Grab ten of these. Invite someone. So they can experience Jesus this holiday season. The greatest thing we could do is bring Jesus a soul. The greatest thing we could do is bring Jesus a soul. How many know people? How many know people right now at your work family? You know they need Jesus. How many know you got people, your neighbors going crazy? They need Jesus. Crazy uncle need Jesus. Anybody got a crazy uncle? They need Jesus, okay. If your uncle's sitting next to you, you shouldn't have put your hand up during that time. It's not a good time to do that. But let's bring a soul to Jesus. I'm so excited to be with you guys. For the ones that I haven't met, my name is Pastor Robert. I'm the associate pastor. And I'm so honored to be with you guys. And uh, as a pastor, the greatest thing I want for your life, I want you to fall in love with Jesus. It's a great, that's, that's the reason why we started this church. The whole, we just want you to fall in love with God. And I can add a second thing, which we're going to talk about today. I want to see you free. I want to see you reach full potential. How many want to reach full potential? We're talking about that you can remain standing. If you got your Bibles, remain standing. Turn to with me real quick to Romans chapter 15. Remain standing as we read this scripture. Or if you have your notepads, your cell phones. Romans 15, 13. We're talking about the gift or giving the gift of joy. This is part two. Giving the gift of joy, part two. But here's my subtitle. Breaking free from the spirit of oppression. You're about to be set free today. You're going to be set free in every area of your life. I'm declaring that right now over you in Jesus' name. How many need freedom in some areas in your life? How many need freedom today is your day. Look at your neighbor and tell them, today's your day. Get ready. Tell the person behind you, you're about to get free today. You've been set up today by God. You've been set up today by the Holy Spirit. All those watching online, you've been set up by God today. Freedom is hitting your house today. Freedom is hitting your hospital bed today. If you're watching us from a hospital, freedom is going to hit you today in your workplace. Give Jesus a shout of praise. He's good. This is why Jesus came, so you can be free. If you're, addicted, if you're addicted to cigarettes, you're going to be set free from cigarettes right now today. Yeah, yeah, thank you. That's God. 
Yeah, you know what, let's just handle it right now. Can we do it right now? Because I might forget at the end. When I teach, I'm here on a mission right now. When God gave, God gave me this, this title on Wednesday, I, Pastor Mark was worshiping, we're all screaming and going crazy. Ah! Right? You know, I look around and I still see people, you know, maybe not worshiping. And, and I said, Lord, how, how come they're not worshiping, you know? And the Holy Spirit told me, they're still oppressed in some areas. They need freedom. Because once you're free, man, you can jump, you can shout, you can do backflips. You're just free. And the Lord told me Wednesday, they're just not 100% free yet, but they're in the right place. I'm declaring right now 100% freedom over your life. I'm going to start it right now. You have, you have been trying to stop smoking forever. You've tried the patch. You've tried everything. I got good news. Jesus has come to set the captives free. He's come to set the oppressed free. Slip your hand up. You want to quit smoking. Slip your hand up right now. You want to quit smoking. See the hand? See the hand? I see the hand? See the hand? See the hand? See the hand? Let's get a little crazy. Anybody got some cigarettes on them? Can you give them to me real quick? Anybody got some cigarettes? Give them to me. You got some, sweetie? You got some? Give them to me. Bring them up here. Bring it up here. You got some right there? Go ahead, Pat. I don't even know what that is. Just hand this. Keep on going this. I don't even know what that is. You guys, right back. What is that? Bring it up. Bring it up. Bring it up. What is that? What is that? What is this? A vape pen. I don't even know what this is. All right. Smoking has gone 21st century on me. I don't even know what this is. <laughs> you want to be set free from all this stuff. Raise your hand. I'm probably the only pastor on a Sunday raising my hand with a vapor on his hand right now. Probably the only pastor in America around the world. Hallelujah, glory be to God. Raise your hands if you want to be healed of addiction, drinking, smoking, pot, whatever it is. Raise your hand. Pornography, raise your hand up. Raise your hand up. Raise your hand up. Keep it up. Keep it up. Keep it up. Keep it up. Put a hand on somebody next to you. Put a hand, put a hand on somebody next to you. They're getting set free by the power of God. In the name of Jesus, every person addicted right now will be set free right now in the name of Jesus. We come against the spirit of oppression. Has you oppressed in domination? We bind that in Jesus' name. Now, if you want to be set free from an addiction, shout with me. Say, Jesus, I ask for freedom today. I thank you, Jesus. This is the reason why you came, to set the captives free. I received my freedom this morning. For who the sun sets free is free indeed. I renounce every relationship with Satan, and I let go of every soul tie that I have with the enemy. It is broken right now, and I am free. Jesus, save me. In Jesus' name I pray. Give the Lord a big shout of praise. Come on, you can do better than that. People just got set free. Glory. Here, Michael, I don't know what you do with that. Toss it, break it. Give your neighbor a high five. Tell him you're in the right place today. Go ahead and have a seat. I got to slow down. I got to preach 11 o'clock too. Man, the Lord is just. So we're in a series right now, you guys. Giving the gift of joy. This is the whole purpose why Jesus came. To give us joy, to give us salvation, to give us peace. Romans 15, 13. I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely, not half, not 75%, to be filled completely. How many want to be filled completely of God, the source of hope? Completely full with joy, peace, because you trust him. Then you, 
then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Given the gift of joy part two, but again the subtitle, breaking free from the spirit of oppression. Let me define oppression for you. Write this down. For the ones that are not taking notes, I, I, I urge you, start taking notes when you get here. This is not me talking, it's God talking. On your phones, write it down. You can even go on our app. A lot of times right there during service, the teaching is right on the app. You can fill in the blank right when we're talking. Here's the definition of oppression. Imposed domination of another person or a group of people. Imposed domination of another person or a group of people in order to control them mentally. To control them physically. To control them emotionally. That's why sometimes when you're under the spirit of oppression, you can't smile because the enemy has control over your emotions. But I'm here to let the devil know he is defeated in the name of Jesus. So it's domination, it's control, mental, physical, and the worst part is spiritually. And look at this definition again. You'll see it on the screen. They got it? Yeah, they got it right there on the screen. Emotionally and spiritually in order, in order to stifle their aspirations and limit their potential. That's why the spirit of oppression is cousins and sister of the spirit of hindrance. It doesn't allow you to move forward. You'll take one step back, five steps. You take one step up, five steps back. You can't continually move forward. If you're under the spirit of hindrance or oppression, a lot of times relationships don't work out. It won't allow you to maybe get married. It won't allow you to move forward. You could be under oppression maybe uh, with finances. You can say, man, I want to buy a house. I want to move forward. But there's a spirit of oppression that won't allow you to move forward with your finances. How many has been praying to buy a house and you just haven't, you just haven't, you, don't, you can't buy a house? Raise your hand. You say, I've been wanting to buy a house, but I just can't. It's being released in the name of Jesus. The spirit of oppression is being broken. It won't allow you to reach full potential. I was talking to Michael right before service, and uh, we've been talking about uh, starting a church in Compton. Started a church in Chicago. And when Pastor just said it on the screen, I just got shivers through my whole body. He goes, when Pastor says it, it's done. Who, who would like to go to Chicago with us to start a church? Compton. How many's down for Compton? About seven, you guys. I don't know. That's why the Holy Spirit is moving right now in a way we haven't seen it ever in this church. We're getting the word like this so we can be totally free to reach full potential. So when we go to Compton, if you're one of the team members, we go out there with full potential. We just went out to the prisons a few weeks ago. I'll give you a really quick tell about, about the power of God showing up. The prisons are finally starting to open. They're letting us in to have chapel again. Can you give Jesus a shout of praise? So, man, I was fired up. I was fired up. I was, all right. They got me approved. They, they did all my tests. All right, you can go to Calipatra. I said, yes, let's get back in, let's get back in there. So I'm fired up, man. We're going to do three services on Saturday. And we're going to have one on Sunday or two, possibly five services at Calipatra. I'm like, man, the devil's going to get so mad. So, man, I'm fired up. We're praying the night before. Me, Joe, and Richard. And we're there. And Saturday comes around. And they have their brown card. Meaning they don't have to go through all the red tape when they get inside. They can just get the, the they, they give them the keys to open up some of the doors to get in the chapel. So we're just going through our thing. We go in the chapel. And it's a, it's a small room. And they had some um, black tape with X's. And they told us before, put the chairs where the X's are at. So I got there. And I got a little, almost a little disappointed. I only seen like seven X's. And I'm like, man, don't they allow seven people in here? I said, well, Lord, we'll come for one. We'll come for one soul. We'll drive two and a half, three hours for one soul. But we got a message that you set people free, God. We got a message you can set the oppressed free. We got a message, God. 
So 8.30 is supposed to be the first service. And you could hear a pin drop. No one's coming in. Usually at that time, so people were in the yard. I look out in the yard and nobody's in the yard. I said, okay, now it's a little weird. Where's everybody at? 8.45 rolls around. I said, hey, get on the phone. Call the marshal or the sergeant, whatever. Hey, what's going on with service? Sergeant picks up the phone. He says, hey. He goes, what are you guys doing in chapel? I said, well, we got service. He goes, no, you're not. We haven't had programs here in a month and a half. We're short staffed. We got a COVID issue. You're not having no service here. You guys got to get in your car and just head home. And he said that in nice words. I'm giving you the nice words. So we hang up the phone. I said, man, I, I heard wrong. Because the night before, I was already getting visions of chains being broken off of people. I was getting visions. I said, God, either I ate too many burritos that, that night. I seen chains falling off, God. So Richard, come on, we got to go. And then Richard, I don't know if Richard's here. And it's probably 11 o'clock. Richard said, hey, we got to pray. God's going to do something. How many, how many get excited when you hear that God's about to do something? So we're there. Long story short, really quick, how God wants to liberate people. We're there. And we get on the phone and say, Sergeant, we got an idea. We're supposed to have chapel. There's people that's been approved to go to chapel. To go to chapel, you know, you got to get signed off. You got to get approved. This is level four yard. So these guys just can't roam around like that. You got to get approved. Say, can you just give us the list? Give us the list of people that are supposed to show up. And we'll just go visit those people. If you let us in their dormitories, in their housing units. The sergeant goes, in the housing units? We don't do that. He let me talk to my guy. Let me just hold on for a second. Now, Sea Yard, they had C1, C2, C3. They had five buildings there. I thought I was going to talk to six people. The Lord had in mind of hundreds. <laughs> but guess what? We don't have the list of the people's names to get into place, so we can't do nothing. We see an inmate walk into the cafeteria. Talk about the power of God about to show up. Because God is going to, when you're totally free, God's going to use you to set people free. So long story short, guy's walking by. We said, who, who's that guy? He's cleaning up the cafeteria. And he knew Richard. goes, hey, you part of chapel? Yeah. What happened? Well, there's no services. You guys don't have enough staff. But we need a list of the people that's supposed to come. And this inmate says, I know who you, I, I know where to get that list. I said, you know where? He goes, yeah, the leader of, because right now we don't have a chaplain at Calipatria. So an inmate is kind of running this. And I forgot his name. I'll just use Raymond for it. I forgot his name. should have remembered his name. He said, Raymond has the list. I said, but, okay, but where's Raymond? He's in C3. I said, well, I can't go in there. Can you? He goes, maybe. He comes back 30 minutes later with the list. And for the first time for our prison ministry at Calipatria, we went into their housing units where the guys live. About 150 guys on top, 150 guys on the bottom. There's two, two guys to a bed. It's about a five by eight cell, very tiny. And you're talking about God wants to set people free. Here's the last thing about that story about the power of God. We were talking to one guy, we're witnessing, he's getting, he's just crying. And we're out in a corner, all the way to the other side of the corner. This guy starts screaming. Because we, we said the way. He goes, is that the way? Is the way Rhode Island here? I know Gabriel. For a second, I thought it was Gabriel's brother because Gabriel's brother's in prison. So I thought it was Gabriel's brother. I asked the guy, is Gabriel's brother? He goes, no, he's, in, he's at Ironwood, so he's not here. So I told, I told the guy, okay, we're going to pray for you. And I told the sergeant, look, he's not part of the list. Because the sergeant was watching us, or whatever he's called, the guard. He said, go ahead, talk to your last guy. He was here three years ago, this guy. Party, things happened wrong, someone got shot, crazy. Right there in that five by eight cell, the spirit of God came into that cell and broke oppression. What was dominating him, he began to shout. And he got delivered right there in his cell. Give Jesus a shout of praise. But some of us in this room, we're under a spirit of oppression. He has you on chains. The enemy has you on chains in a few areas. But today, those chains are coming off. 
I want you to write this down. Let's make it very clear. Who and what brings oppression? Who and what brings oppression? His name is Satan and the demons and the angels that followed him. So who brings the spirit of oppression? Someone say Satan. He brings oppression. Jesus brings joy. Jesus brings life. But the enemy's out to steal, kill, and destroy. He's out to steal, kill, and destroy. And some of us today were bound in a few areas. But the Lord has heard your cry. He has seen those sleepless nights. He is seeing that teenager that's acting crazy right now. How do you know the Lord sees us? Look at Exodus chapter 3 verse 7 really quick. Exodus chapter 3 verse 7. The Lord has heard your cry. He has seen your oppression. He has seen those areas where the enemy is trying to dominate you in. Exodus 3, 7 and 8. Then the Lord told him, I have certainly seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. Some of you guys have cried out, Lord, have you, are you hearing me? Lord, do you see what I'm going through? The Lord not only hears, he sees, he's about to rescue you. He's about to rescue you out of every stronghold of the enemy. I have certainly seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. I've heard their cries of distress because of their harsh slave drivers. Yes, I'm aware of their suffering. And here it goes. So I have come down to rescue them from the power of the Egyptians. Guys, I'm about to rescue you from the power and the grips of the enemy. From the grips of addiction. You've been under the control of the enemy. And God is saying, I have come to destroy the works of the devil. Jesus Christ came to destroy the works of the devil. How many believe that in this room? Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. That's why we can be in Calipatria prison, a guy that I do not know, and he's crying out for help. And some of us today, we need to cry out, Lord, save me. Lord, rescue me. If you're not in a P12 right now, you got to get in a P12. You got to get into a small group discipleship. We're seeing more deliverances now we've ever seen in our whole church history. Our P12 got together tonight. We were just praying over the phone and people getting delivered and set free by the power of God. Because Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. I want you to write these few things down. How does oppression enter? How does it enter? How do we break free of it? We'll kind of go back and forth. How does oppression enter? How do we break free of it? How does oppression enter? How do we break free of it? Number one, oppression enters through areas of compromise. Oppression is one of the ways the spirit of oppression enters is through areas of compromise. Once you give the enemy access to your life through compromise, now, yeah, he could steal, he could kill, he could, he could develop strongholds. He can now oppress you in areas. How many of you ever been addicted and you tried to stop, but you just couldn't stop? You're like, what is going on? That's the oppression. But a lot of it is open by compromise. We got to watch our phones right now. My, my, I, I just, our family just grew another person this week. I'll just give you a testimony. We, we, we fostered in another girl this week. Um, we, so we have two foster girls in the house. This is her biological sister we just brought in. So Jazzy's been with us. She's 14. We just brought in her 16-year-old biological sister with us. And I, 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 I had to step in. She was on her sixth foster home. She was about to go to her sixth foster home in a year and a half. In a year. I said, that's over with. Not on my watch. And I was praying and I called Lisa. And if you ever talk to Lisa, Pastor Lisa, she's straight up, man. I said, Lisa, Veronica asked her, should, should we bring her in? And Lisa goes, well, it's very simple. You know, she talks. It's very simple. <laughs> if you have means to help her, if you have means to help her, then you need to help her. Period, 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 period. That's all she said. 
So I talked to Veronica. Hey, did you talk to Lisa? What's she say? I know she's black and white. What did she say? If you have the means to help her, help her. <laughs> I said, that's it? That's it? I was on the phone calling her. We got her in. I didn't know she operates in the gift of dreams. And first night she's with us, she has a dream. First night? So she wakes up on fire the next one. First night? I got a dream. And she, about me, about Mariah. So the dream was, part of it, I can't give the whole thing because it's too much. Part of the dream, a spirit and a demon comes into the house, walks through the front door. He has the lock. We have a little padlock and the demon just, she sees it. The demon has the padlock and walks right in. The demon walks up front and walks to the, out their bedroom. They share a bedroom, her and Jazzy. So Jazzy's up top, she's on bottom and she sees the demon. It's a dream. She sees the demon come in and reaches over Zoe and grabs her phone. Gets the phone. So Zoe's sleeping here and Jazzy's on top. And Zoe's flipping out in the dream. She says, Jazzy, wake up. There's a demon in the house. There's a demon in the house. There's a demon in our room. Get out. So she wakes up and they look at the demon and, and the young girl says, well, oh, no, that demon comes around. It's okay. He just, he just flips to the phone and he takes off. And it went into other things. And she told me that dream. I said, oh, my God, the demons are even trying to enter through the telephones. We got to watch what we're watching. Any area of compromise, the enemy is just looking for that little foothold. We talked about it before. He needs that little door to open so he can develop strongholds. So we can develop the spirit of oppression. That's how addiction starts. By little weed here and there. Then you go to cocaine. And now you're addicted. But today, Jesus has come to destroy the works of the devil. Can I get an amen? So how does oppression enter? Areas of compromise. So in this area of compromise, how do we break free from this? We have to repent of our sins. We need to repent. So the areas that we've compromised in, including myself, we need to repent of those areas. The Bible says in Acts 2, 38, and Peter said to them, repent. Change your old way of thinking. That's what repenting means. It means a turn and have a different way of thinking. Turn from your sinful ways. Accept and follow Jesus as the Messiah and be baptized. Each of you in the name of Jesus Christ, because of forgiveness of your sins, you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So if we've compromised an area and the spirit of oppression has entered, the first thing we need to do is repent. Say, God, forgive me for what I've done. Forgive me as a father if you're a dad. Forgive me for those areas of compromise. And Lord, I turn from those areas. See, when we repent, we now change leadership over our lives. That's how we break away from this, this oppression. When we repent, we change leadership. God is now our leader. When we repent, now God is our leader. And now we need to renounce every relationship we've ever had with Satan. We need to renounce everything that we've, any sin that we've had. They, we need to renounce it. Pastor, what does that word renounce mean? This is what it means. Formally declare one's abandonment of a claim, right, or possession. Renounce. Formally declare verbally one's abandonment of a claim, right, possession. So some of us need to renounce, for example, rebellion. I renounce the rebellion that I was under. And from this day forward, I will not rebel any longer. We're going to practice that right now. Say it with me. I renounce rebellion in the name of Jesus. I renounce every relationship that I've had with the enemy. I renounce unforgiveness. I renounce pride. I renounce lust. Today I am free in the name of Jesus. I renounce witchcraft in the name of Jesus. I renounce every attack of the enemy against my family 
in the name of Jesus. Give Jesus a shout of praise. I renounce it. That's not me anymore. The ones you're getting free from, from caffeine or from, from, that, from that cigarettes, you're getting set free by the power of God. I renounce every smoke that I ever took. Everything that I've inhaled, I renounce it out of my body in the name of Jesus. We're going to have deliverances at people's homes. People are going to be calling us demons. I'm getting delivered in my kitchen. Okay, it's already happening. We had a lady this week. She, then someone called me a member. She, she needs deliverance. Man, I called her. She was manifesting on the phone. I rebuked that demon in the name of Jesus, and the demon hung up on me. <laughs> I said, I need some more power, man. I called our team, and they went down to the house and get ready for some massive deliverance. Freedom out the way. You better run to that class if you haven't been there. Because you won't be able to use to your full potential. Here's number two. The time is running out. It's too much. It's too crazy up in this place. So number one, how does oppression enter? How could it enter? Compromise. And how do we break that compromise? How do we break it? Oh, my gosh. You guys are taking better notes of myself. Number two, how does oppression enter? Oppression enters when you don't know your identity. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of the Most High. I'm a child of the King. Like Christians said, an undefeated king, never lost before, never lost a battle before. That's my king. That's my God. I'm a child of the Most High. Satan is already defeated. He's underneath my feet. I'm a child of the King. 1 John 3, 1. See how very much our Father loves us, for he calls us his children. And that is what we are. Who are we? Who are we? Who are we? You're God's child. I want somebody else to shout. Just, just shout it. We're going crazy today. Somebody, somebody, hold on, hold on. I don't care how the video looks. Who cares about the video? Okay. Well, hold on. You're getting too crazy for me. I want one person to stand up and just tell, tell everybody who you are in Christ. You don't even got to say a child. You can say whatever you want. Hold on, hold on, hold on, okay. What are you? What are you? How do you know that? What? Oh. That's your identity. Who are, who are you, sweetie? Who are you? I'm the apple of God's eye. Who are you, sir? You're a child of God. How do you know that? What? See, look, look, an enemy could only have you oppressed because you don't know who you are. Who are you, sweetie? Who are you? Does everybody know who you are? Shout it to the mountaintops. Who are you? You're a witness. You're a witness of what you've seen, what you heard, and what you've experienced. And what have you experienced? What? I feel like throwing this walker across the room. I'm sorry, sir. Do you know? I would have messed up Joe at least. I wasn't going to throw that walker. I wasn't going to throw it. Do you know the Emancipation Proclamation when, when slavery was over? Do you know this? That, let me get the, the right year for, I don't want to, what, what year was it? Was it 1860? 1863. Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation January 1st, 1863. What year? But some of the slave owners, some of the slave owners kept this information from the slaves. And they had them bound still. Texas was one of them. The slaves didn't find out until two years later in 1865. Hey, you're free! What? I'm going to let you out. You're free! You don't have to be bound. You could be free. 
Look at your neighbor and tell them, I'm free. Someone shout it on the mountaintops and scream, I'm free. You're free. And if you have kids, your kids could be free. Don't let your kid walk around the house like this. What's wrong, son? Oh, nothing. These teenagers nowadays, I just, I'm sorry. I break that spirit of oppression in the name of Jesus. I speak joy. <laughs> Don't allow this spirit to hang out in your house. You got a crazy husband. Just pour oil. When he's sleeping, just pour a bunch of oil on him. He's just slipping out of bed when he wakes up. What's wrong with you? I break oppression off of you. Sorry, husbands. You're going to wake up with a whole bottle of oil on you. Vegetable oil on you. One more thing, we were done. Too much time, it's going crazy. Number three, how does oppression enter? Last one, I got a few more, but we don't have time. Oppression enters when we allow our mistakes to define us. So oppression can enter through compromise, through sin. Oppression can enter when we don't know our identity. Oppression can enter when you allow your mistakes to define you. Don't allow the enemy to condemn you any longer. Don't allow the enemy to bring up your past anymore. That's your past. It's gone. That will make you feel unworthy and act like you messed up so bad you can't, you can't come back. Yeah, you can't come back. You're here today in the house of God. The Bible says a righteous man falls seven times and gets right back up. Proverbs 24, 16. A righteous man falls gets right back up. Make a mistake. Get back up. We've all made a mistake. We've all done something stupid. Have you ever done something stupid? Have you ever really messed up bad? All of us join the club. All of us. But we stay oppressed when the enemy tries to condemn us. Romans 8.1 tells me there's no condemnation for those who belong to Jesus Christ. The devil can't condemn me. He can't bring up my past. That's the past. I'm a child of God. I am forgiven. I have been redeemed. I have been bought with the blood of Jesus. Stand up and give Jesus a shout of praise. Let the redeemed say so. Woo! You can stay standing, stay standing. We're going to dismiss. It's too much stuff. I'm getting too hot going crazy up here. You guys? I want you free. More than me, Jesus wants you free. If you're still clicking on a porn site, let it be your last day. It's done. It's over. You still got unforgiveness towards someone? Don't walk out these doors like that. Let it go, please. Life is too short. Please let it go. I want to see you free. I want to see you can just smile. Not because everything is going perfect. It's because you know Jesus is going to work it all out. You have Jesus and you're free. Because some of us, we've let oppression enter through disappointments, through loss. You lost somebody. Someone passed away. The spirit of grief comes and oppresses you to be sad. Oppresses you. You lost someone close to you, and he's using that to try to oppress you, to keep you under his foot. But I'm here to let you know, everything works out for the good. For those called his purpose of love, everything is going to work out for the good. Pastor, I don't understand what's going on. Our job is not to understand what's going on. Our responsibility is to just trust him. Father, what are you doing? When my mom was passing away, I didn't understand what was going on. People of faith, I'm all, man, get up. I said, okay, Lord. But they, that night she was going to die. I knew she was dying. She was, I knew it. She was a few hours away. I knew it. I said, God, I don't understand. He goes, don't, it's not time to understand. Just trust me in what I'm doing right now. Just trust me. I'm working on your father. He was telling, I'm working on your dad. I'm working on you. 
how to trust me in this difficult dark season. And maybe you're in a dark season right now. The enemy's trying to oppress you. It's like, I don't, I don't understand what's going on, but Lord, I trust you. If you're in this room today and you're saying, Pastor, you know what? I have a, I have a few areas that the devil, he's oppressing me. I'm addicted here. I got this. I'm not thinking straight sometimes. My thoughts start going this way. He's got me oppressed. Maybe, yeah, maybe it goes into depression. You're sad. You can't sleep at night. And you're taking pills. Whatever it is, he has you oppressed. Like you can't, it feels like you got a weight, like a, like a backpack on. It's like so much weight. And God is saying, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. Give me that backpack. Give me all your worries. Get set free. And if you need freedom in any area in your life, I want you to run to the altar. All we have is a few minutes. Run to the altar. If you need freedom from oppression, from a spirit of hindrance, from a spirit of addiction, from a spirit of doubt, from a spirit of unbelief, I'm not trusting people. You can't trust leadership. You can't trust pastors. You can't trust anyone relationship to relationship relationships don't work out you're saying God I need freedom come to the altar come to the altar come to the altar we're gonna pray with you right now come 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 we're gonna pray with you come I want to pray with you just come 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 I need freedom there it goes sweetie spirit of oppression broken there it goes there it goes there it goes spirit of oppression we bind you in the name of Jesus. There it goes. There it goes. It's being broken right there. He's been oppressing you. It's like a weight. It's being lifted off right now. Come, 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 you guys, come. Yes. Yes. Here's the last thing as we end. People are getting prayer already. Come, you guys, come. Look at that, you guys. Big old family coming. People coming, come. Let's break the spirit of oppression. Generational curses. It's been on the whole family for years. And God said, no, I'm breaking that. That's why I came. I came to destroy the works of the devil. I came to set the captives free, the oppressed free, the blind to see. That's, my, that's why I came. I came to save. Come, come, come. Here's the last thing. We got a big group up here. People just letting stuff go and getting set free. Here's the last thing. Maybe you're up here. Maybe you're at your seats. If this were your last day on earth, do you know where you're going? If you were to die today, where are you going? Are you going to heaven? I got to ask you. Well, yeah, I'm going to heaven. Why? Why are you going to heaven? Well, Pastor, I'm a good person. I go to church. That stuff doesn't get us into heaven. The only way we go to heaven is putting our faith in Jesus. You got to make Jesus your Lord. Religion doesn't save you. Reading the Bible doesn't save you. You do that because you get saved. You just fall in love with the Word, but that doesn't save you. Why give to the church? That doesn't save you. Have you received Jesus as your Savior? So here it goes. Maybe you're here already in the front. Maybe you're at your seat and say, Pastor, I need to get right with God. If I were to die today, I don't know where I'm going, but I want to go to heaven. I want to repent of my sins. I need to get right with God. That's me. Raise your hands when I count to three. One, two, three. Three, raise your hands right now. Raise them, raise them, raise them. See a hand right there, yes. I see a couple hands right there. I see another hand there, yes. Anybody else? I think maybe a hand, hand over there. Sir, I think I see you. All those that just raised your hands, you're at your seats. There's hands up here too. All those that just raised your hands at your seats, come up here. We're going to lead you in a prayer of salvation today. Come on down. As they come down, you guys give them a big shout of praise. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down, sweetie. Come on down. This is your day. Yes. Come, come, come. We're going to wait for you. Come on down, young man. There you go. Come, come. Come, come, come. Another one, two, three, four. In the car. Come on, sir. Yeah, come, come. This is your day. Yes. I'm waiting because there's a few more people coming. A few more people. Come on, you guys. Give him a, give him a big shout of support. Hand clap. Give us some support. Proud of you. Proud of you. A couple more coming over here. Come, 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 come. 
Given the gift of joy, this is why Jesus came to set us free. He came to liberate us. Everyone bow their head and close their eyes. Everyone bow their head and close their eyes. I liked what somebody said a few weeks ago. One of the, I think it was a guy who was here for the marriage conference. Somebody said it. Coming to the altar of repentance is just the beginning. You got to get to discipleship. That's your next step. This is just the beginning. If you don't get to discipleship, you're not going to make it. You won't last. You got to get around a group. You got to learn. And you get into a P12. You got to get some mentorship. Someone just pouring into you. You won't make it. So this is barely the beginning. We repent. Jesus saves us. It's barely the starting line. After that is discipleship. Every head bow, every eyes closed. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I surrender my life to you. I ask forgiveness. I repent from all the sins I've committed. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. Jesus, on the third day you rose again to give me eternal life. I receive salvation. I receive forgiveness. And I forgive everyone who has hurt me, who has let me down. And Jesus, I ask you, set me free from the spirit of oppression. Today I am free. Today I am free. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you just said that prayer for salvation, you're saved. Don't leave this altar till someone talks to you. Because your next step is discipleship. That's your next step. We're going to sign you up, get you to some classes, and get you strong with God. We still got a few people over here, you guys. We need some leaders. We still got some people that have nobody praying with them. We got one, two, three, I think four or five right here that still need some help. Don't leave. We'll talk to you. We'll pray with you in a moment. God bless you guys. Don't forget Wednesday night, special service. Sunday, the gift giveaway is going to be incredible. We'll see you guys. Have a great week.